Jackie, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to, to have you here. Um, we have an international audience and they always like to know where everyone is from, sort of, because um, we, we may not know where you were sort of born and raised. I'm, I'm from New York. I was born and raised in New York. Um, well, partially raised in New York and in, in this, and then the rest in the South. And then when I was 18, uh, well, 17, going on 18, I moved back to New York. Okay. So I'm, I'm a New York girl all day. Okay. And, you know, because, you know, you're, you're, you're very familiar that there's probably no one from my generation who won't know your name. But how did you start singing? I, um, well, I've been singing since I was little. And then um, when I was 12, my sister was dating um, one a member of the group Change. And a lot of people from, you know, from the new era wouldn't know who Change is. They have to go back. But Change is a group that Luther Bandross was part of. Wow. And um, my brother-in-law was in Change. And he, I would come up for the summers from, you know, from the South to see my sister. And he would take me around, you know, to different shows, to the, you know, shows he was doing. And then meeting, like, all the singers, other singers and stuff. So I met, like... Johnny Kemp that just that did just got paid. Yeah, I made yeah, yeah. I met Johnny Kemp when I was twelve. Wow. Um, I met New Edition when they were little. <laughs> they were you know they had Candy Girl out and all of that. I met them. Um, and I'll I'll speed that up about New Edition. All of us coming back in each other's lives later. Um, but I was you know I was I was introduced to the industry young. Wow. So it made me want to sing even more. Um, so after I graduated from high school, I had two scholarships for college wow. and for music. And I didn't want to take my scholarships. I wanted to take my chance singing. So wow. I was like, well, I'm going to go back to New York now. And I went back to New York and my brother-in-law started helping me. His name is Vincent Henry. And he was a part of Change, but then he was working with them too, May. And um, he left Change. He was working with them too, May. And I, I got the honor of going on the road with M2 May and watching shows and learning from M2 May and Tawatha and um, so many other like singers I was able to be around. Um, Melissa Morgan, Allison Williams. Um, I learned a lot from Johnny Kemp. Uh, we had a band together for a little while, like, like I was filling in with them. And that's who I was kind of learning from, from, you know, from the beginning. But um, then when I turned 19, I met Teddy Riley. Oh. And Teddy and I had a band. We started a band and we used to do all the, you know, little spots in Harlem and in Queens and all of that around New York. And uh, we stayed together for a little while. Um, I was the lead singer and um, I'm trying to, oh my gosh, he, he's he's deceased now. Um, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going blank because I'm old. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm drawing a blank. Um, he passed away. He was, he sung joy and pain with Rob Bass and uh, Omar Chandler. I'm sorry. Oh, Omar okay. Chandler. So myself and Omar Chandler, Omar Chandler were the lead singers for our band with Teddy. And we did that for about a year and then we disbanded and everybody went about their way. And I was filling in for a singer with a band and a friend of mine from another band called Jamila came in and he was like, you know, I want you to meet somebody that's in my band. And I was like, oh, okay. And it was Keith Sweat. And Keith wasn't, you know, Keith Sweat yet. <laughs> and he um, he wanted to, he kept saying, you know, I want you to come to the studio. You know, I would love for you to sing on some stuff. I'm working on a record. So, you know, I was just like, whatever. Nobody's trying to come around him. <laughs> and it took me about maybe three weeks to a month to go to the studio. Um, he called me 50 times and I was like, okay, I'll come. Finally, I go to the studio. When I get there, 
Teddy's there. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm working on a project. And I was like, okay, so, you know, what's this project about? And, you know, Keith was telling me about it, but, you know, Teddy was like, you know, I'm, I'm doing the music. So, so I said, all right. So I felt comfortable because Teddy was there. Yeah. And um, it just went crazy from that point. We did Don't Stop Your Love on Keith's first, you know, album on the Make It Last Forever album. We did Don't Stop Your Love first. Then we did, um, I'm trying to think, I Wanna. I Wanna was done second. And then it was, here comes Make It Last Forever. And they had called me and another girl. Um, was that Tammy? And, huh? Tammy Lucas? No, it wasn't Tammy Lucas. It was a girl named, um, well, she's a grown woman now, <laughs> by the name of um, Vivian Sessoms. Okay. And um, they called her in to sing too. Keith wanted her because Keith was working with her, but I knew her. And they had called her in to come to try to sing the song as well. But Keith's manager and Teddy was like, we want Jackie to try first. We want Jackie to do it first. So, of course, when I went in, it was all she wrote, you know, <laughs> blessing came down and, you know, I, the most high blessed me and make it last forever happened. And it came out great. But to be honest, I hated it. I hated Keith's voice. I was <laughs> never a fan of Keith's voice. I was like, Lord, what are we doing? <laughs> Why? And then, um, you know, when, he got an album, you know, once we started doing the album, the album was finished. When the album dropped, everything went crazy. You know, um, when the album dropped, I was still working for ABC. I was working at ABC. I was working at ABC Radio at this time. Okay. And I was like, I'm not leaving my job until I know this is a hit. You know, this all of this is hitting. Yeah. And right out the door, everything, one by one, pow, pow, pow. You know, don't stop your love, hit, I wanna. You know, then everything was just hitting and we had to go on the road. So then I left my job. I was like, okay, I gotta leave my job now, <laughs> you know? So I left my job and we went out on the road. And when we went out on the road, when we were on the road, we didn't even do a video for Make It Last Forever because Make It Last Forever blew up so big by itself, mm. just on its own from us doing city to city, you know, we were doing six days a week, killing it, killing it, killing it. And it was it was us and salt and pepper and raw bass. Wow. Uh, and 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 uh heavy D and the boys. Okay. Killing it everywhere. It was called Slamming 88. That was our tour. <laughs> killing it everywhere. And you know, from that, that was all she wrote. Everything just started blowing up, blowing up, and just going to the next stages. So, okay, you can you can get in in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Make It Last Forever is actually one of my top three favorite albums of all time. So I don't skip any of those tracks because I'm a massive, massive Teddy Riley fan. So all he did. Um, but what was the name of the group that you and Omar and Teddy had? Because Teddy, Teddy said it was called something else. He said We said the project. The project. He said it's called something else. We don't know what our band name was now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did, did he leave that to go with Timmy to do uh, Kids at Work or was it before Kids at Work or was it before? It was after Kids at Work. That's oh, okay. how I met Teddy. Um, I met Teddy from one of the guys that was in Kids at Work. His name was Clarell. Clarell, And okay. I was dancing with him in a club, <laughs> in a club. That's how we met. And he was like, he sang and blah, blah, blah. And then he told me about you know, Teddy and them, he said the group was called Kids at Work. He told me about them. And he was like, I want you to meet, you know, Teddy. That's how I ended up meeting Teddy and us putting a band together. Okay. Um, Clarell was nowhere in sight after that. Like, <laughs> you know. But what, why didn't it work? Why, why do you think it didn't work? Because, you know, Teddy and Omar. We've... Well, with the band, I, th I just think that, um, let me see. I'm trying to adjust this because you're right now. My arm hurts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, yeah. <laughs> Put it out um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, adjust it so, just the way. No, I'll do it a little bit. I don't want to, because I didn't want to take away. I don't want to see the sun is like shining. Um, I didn't get home, so I couldn't do it from my house. Okay. Um, so we didn't, 
we weren't trying to do a band like to put an album together. Okay. We were just doing, you know, because he had kids at work going on. So, um, and Gene Griffin was in jail then. <laughs> so Gene was actually telling, you know, we would rehearse in Harlem on 145th Street and uh, in this spot that was crazy. And it was a lot of like drugs going on, a lot of gambling, drinking, all of that. <laughs> and uh, uh, Gene was in jail and he was like, make sure nothing happens to Teddy and Jackie and them up in there. Let me tell you, they protected us with their lives. Nothing, wow. nothing. And that's what we, we used to rehearse. And then we um, would just do our shows. And we ended up disbanding because it was like, okay, all right, y'all next, because we got stuff to do. And I think, it, you know, it was more so because Teddy was getting busy, mm -hmm. you know, doing more production work. And little did we know we were going to meet right back up together. Yeah. You know, that was fate. You know, that was nothing but the most high. I, I always say nothing is by accident. Everything is on purpose. Yeah. Whatever happens in your life, whether it's bad or good, you know, it's on purpose. It, you know, for your learning experience or whatever you have to go through, you know, whatever generational curses that got to be broken, what, whatever it is. I'm, I'm very spiritual. So, you know, and I don't mean spiritual in a witchcraft way and no witchy foo way. <laughs> I mean, you know, my connection to, to the most high, to mm -hmm. God, to the most high. Um, and to, to Jesus, Yahusha, I say the Hebrew names because I go by the Hebrew names. Okay. Um, and, you know, I know that it was divine. You know what I mean? Mm, I knew yeah. that we were supposed to. So, you you mentioned Johnny Kemp, and and most of us would say, oh, okay, just got paid, and and that's one hit wonder. But you said you you've known him, and from before that, I mean, for those of us who just knew him for that one song, what was he like as a performer and, and a person? Johnny, oh my gosh, Johnny was such a great performer. When I tell you. I watched him every night. They had these bands in New York and Johnny Kemp and 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 um my my brother-in-law was in the band with them like they had these bands that were incredible. And that one band was called Kinky Fox. And when I tell you half the dudes in the band they were you know they were out with everybody. They were out with Atlantic Star, wow. you know, um M2 May um New Edition, everybody. They were just playing for everybody. But Johnny was just one of those performers that he had it. You know, that he had a gift. And I learned so much from Johnny, just watching him. He commanded the stage. You know, Johnny Johnny was the bomb, and he taught me a lot. And um, I wish people could have gotten to know Johnny even more. He was Bahamian, and... Um, he was my family all day up until he passed away. Um, he, you know, his sons are my nephews. Wow. You know, his wife is my sister. Wow. Um, just a good guy. Good guy. Sweetheart. Great entertainer. Oh, my gosh. And could sing like nobody's business. And I really wish that his records, you know, took off even more. But. You know, our business, our business is so fickle. We don't know what's going to happen, you know, from one point to the next. And record labels, if they're not feeling you, you know, they're not feeling you. It's, it's just whatever. It's whatever they're, whatever's popping at the time. Yeah. So he didn't get his just due, you know. And um, he, when he went out to go out, back out with Teddy to do the, the, um, New Jack Swing tour that Teddy was doing. Um, and the crazy part is Teddy called me and was like, Jackie, can you talk Johnny into coming out and doing this, you know, New Jack uh, Swing tour with me? And I called Johnny and Johnny said no. And I was like, all right, you know, that's your decision. And Teddy wanted me to come. And he's like, because you know, you're, you're the true, you're, you are the true first lady of New Jack Swing. And I was like, boy, stop with that first lady nonsense and that junk. I don't, you know, I don't go by that mess. And, you know, he was like, no, Jack, and I want you out here. But, I, you know, I had my kids um, 
and I couldn't do it. And my daughter, she was, you know, smaller. She's 12 now, but she's smaller. And I was just like, nah, I can't do it. And um, Johnny decided he was going to do it. I didn't know Johnny decided he was going to do it. And when he went out to go meet them, in, um, he was meeting up with them in Jamaica. That's where he got. Wow. He didn't get to go and, you know, meet Teddy on the um, Tom Joyner cruise to uh, start the New Jack Swing tour with them. He didn't, he died. Um, to this day, they said he slipped on a rock. Wow. That's something I can't even believe because I used to watch Johnny Kemp stand on one leg on tables, jumping from table to table, singing, get going in. I mean, oh my gosh, one of the dopest performers that, that I've watched. And um, there's no way he slipped on a rock. That's like, no, he didn't slip on a rock. Somebody killed him. That, that, that I believe. I don't believe he slipped on a rock. Well, why would um, you think they may want to do that? You know, he got left behind. He was supposed to be on that Teddy rally, you know, on that boat. You know, a lot of times they think that people have money because they're entertainers oh, okay. and whatever. And, you know, Jamaica can be a little ratchet. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that something happened. I believe that somebody killed him. I believe that somebody tried to rob him. Oh, okay. Because they found him, his ID was sitting off. But when they found him, he was underwater, not under the water, but floating between oh. the rocks and the water. And, you know, he was gone. And they were oh. like, he and it took them a long time with this whole investigation and all of that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I, I still don't believe to this day that he slipped on the rock. Not at all. Wow. Well, not, not Johnny that I know that was standing on tables and dancing. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. But I mean, you, you know, it's interesting because you, um, you, you know, you, you tracked your journey, um, sang on one of my favorite albums. I mean, Make It Last Forever, I, I, it's, it is one of my, I, you know, I think that one and the Bobby album and the Guy album. Um, were you surprised how, um, you know, because you've known, you knew Teddy from, I didn't realize for instance, how, how long you've known Teddy, to, to see him as a producer. Was that a surprise because you were in a band together? Did you know he, he had it in him? I knew he had something in him. <laughs> Teddy, Teddy was always, you know, amazing, um, uh, amazingly talented. Like his, he, he was a genius, and he still is. Um, so me seeing him young and knowing young Teddy, that you know, because even now to know, okay, you know a Teddy Riley, you know. Teddy is Teddy. I don't look at him like that. <laughs> I'm like, I know Teddy that I was in his project department, you know, <laughs> in Harlem and Mickey Mouse was running over my feet when we were <laughs> to have a rehearsal. That's Teddy I know and uh, his mama, you know, I'm like, I know that. Okay. So, so when people are like, oh, you know, Teddy, Teddy Riley, Teddy Riley, Teddy, I'm like, okay, that you know, that's my brother. That's my brother. But I know that, you know, I know the Teddy that came from uh, Harlem, you know, I know the Teddy, the, the real true Teddy. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just, okay, that's Teddy. <laughs> like, wow. But yeah. So, when, 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 because make, make a last where Blake blows up, then Teddy and Timmy uh, and Aaron form Guy. What happens to you then in the midst of all this? What, 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 you know, everyone's getting deals and stuff. Well, when they were doing that thing, their thing, I got my deal with MCA. Oh. Um, I was with MCA Universal. I, I did a huge deal. And my album, my album didn't come out right away. What happened was Teddy and Keith were supposed to produce my album. And they started fussing with each other. And <laughs> they didn't end up doing the album together. Then Teddy was like, well, I'm not doing it at all. And I'm crying. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I started with you. Like, how are you not going to do the record? So Teddy didn't end up working on the record. Keith produced um, songs on my record. Uh, I'm trying to remember how many. Two? One or two. But 
he did um he did a cameo on my album i had my single was called it hurts me it did really well um keith was in it you know he was on the song and he he was in it he was in the video and um it did pretty good but my album didn't even come out until um 92 it was it was on the shelf because mca had so many artists so many black artists mm -hmm. that we all was just like waiting in the cut but while i was waiting you know for my record to drop i got a phone call to first of all no i'll say this first i got a phone call from herbie lovebug and okay, herbie so wanted me to come mm -hmm. and herbie wanted me to come and fix a song and i was like okay so he said i'm calling i'm, I'm bringing you and stanley brown in i said okay stanley producer stanley brown that did um christopher williams stuff don't don't wake me i'm dreaming and oh, all yeah. that, you know that's stanley brown and uh but he stanley does a lot of gospel music stuff too so we stanley and i went in and it was like okay we got to fix the song so i did expressions i i actually um when i went in it was a mess and i had to <laughs> i had to rewrite you know a part for me and arrange it the way I wanted it. Cause I was like, oh, what would Shaka Khan do? Wow. You know, she was on the rap record. So then I came up with that, you know, um, don't tell me what I cannot do, you know that. And yeah. I was like, that's a Shaka thing. That's something <laughs> Shaka would do. And I just did it. So we, they put the, release the record. The single goes double platinum. It was platinum, right? Like so fast. It was yeah. Salt and Pepper's first number one record wow. on on the Billboard, um, on the Billboard hip hop charts. It was their first number one record, and it was number one for eight weeks, and it blew up. It just blew up. But after all of that's going on, and I got in trouble for doing that song too. Um, by, but <laughs> from who? MCA. By, by my by my manager Hiram Hicks and the uh, record label was like we didn't tell you to go be singing on nobody else's stuff what you so I did it because I wanted to do it but by me doing it I got um, bamboozled um, I don't make a penny off of that song wow. not a doubt and that song went double platinum my voice they still even with with all of this streaming. The streaming services and everything i was going through a thing with salt and pepper the same time spinderella was and um salt did not want me to have credit on um she didn't want me to get residuals from from the song she said i did a favor for herbie but i'm like i did a favor for herbie when i gave when i didn't take a point on the record and I did a favor for Herbie when I didn't go and get my um, writing credit because I wrote my part. So I'm like, I'm doing this as a favor, but now streaming services and stuff come into play and she doesn't want me to get any, any um, residuals for my voice being on it. Are you kidding me? So I was going through a hard time then this was in 2020 and I couldn't afford an attorney. So I, when I tell you the most high put in my spirit, let it go, let it go. And I let it go. I just said, you know what? I'm not fighting this fight anymore. You want to be greedy. You want to keep money for yourself knowing good and well, I sung this daggone song and made it platinum too. Like y'all didn't make this platinum. My singing made this platinum on top of your rapid. So, you know, I felt some type of way, but I had to let it go. I had to be <laughs> and I had to let it go. So um I let it go. And and but back then, you know, I was in my feelings back then because it was so much stuff being done, you know, to me that was just mean and, and evil. And um I just kept letting stuff go, letting stuff go. When my album got put on hold. Um, I got a phone call from my girlfriend. She, she sung with me with Keith Sweat too. And she said, I just got a phone call 
um, to do Toto, um, Africa Hold a Line, mm-hmm. Toto. And she said, I, they, at, they told me, do you know anybody else that can come and do this? And she said, my friend Jackie McGee. And they were like, Jackie McGee? We know Jackie McGee. She's on MCA. We have, you know, we have artists on MCA. This was their management. And they had um, a country artist named Vince Gill on MCA Vince at the Gill. time. Wow. And they were like, well, we already know Jackie. We know who she is, X, Y, Z. And they were like, do you think you could get her? And she said, I'll ask her. When she asked me, I was like, Toto, hands down, of course. <laughs> I was like, I'm there. <laughs> so I ended up going out on the road with Toto from 90 to 92. For two and, years? Um, for two years, we I was with Toto. And my, my record did not drop until 92. So it was that time in between. But that time in between, I had another number one record with Salt and Pepper. And then I was singing with Toto. So nothing was like, you know, it wasn't like I wasn't doing anything because I was doing something, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But so it was, it was, you know, it was, it was a good thing. And then it was bad. But when did you yeah. record your, because um, I'm okay for, with the Salt and Pepper. I didn't realize that was you, like the homeless lady with the hat. Yes, that's me. <laughs> yeah, most of us wouldn't realize that was you in the video. Um, that was me. But when did you record your album then? What year did you finish recording it? I finished recording my record in um, January 1990. My album was done. And then so for two years, we were just sit, sitting down, just waiting. But I know yeah. that at that time, MCA was was almost black mecca. They had, they, they had the new, Yeah, they had all the new edition, Bell with the Vogue, Ralph. Then they had, um, they had all the uptown people um go, go at, at the same time Jody Watley so they just they I actually thought MC was a black label for at one point so yes, I, I yes. could just imagine that they just were just stuck with, with a lot of things um but was it also the time with Gene Griffin so Teddy is it that he didn't want to or was it that Gene oh uh, wondering because because you said you've known Teddy since he was a kid, and then he didn't. He said he doesn't want to work on your record. Was it because of Keith? But he could have done songs separately. But was it Gene? Because we all we've heard that we've heard the the documentaries about how Gene controlled things. So was Gene the one stopping it, or do you think Teddy? You couldn't convince Teddy to do something solo with you. No, it wasn't Gene. Um, it wasn't Gene at all because Gene loved me. That was my that was my dude. And let me tell you something. I was the one person that was never scared of Gene. Gene would do anything for me. I love my Gene Griffin, but he he was terrible. But <laughs> I, I love Gene. He always he always made sure I was good. Um, no, it had nothing to do with Gene. It was because Teddy and Keith were fussing, and then they they weren't working together anymore. And um, at the time, my manager um, my manager was Hiram Hicks. He managed New Edition BBD, and he managed, started managing me, and then he took on Keith Sweat, and I, that made me mad because I'm like, you taking on Keith Sweat, that's, you know, that's not helping me. So, of course, mm-hmm. he started doing stuff more in Keith's favor than in my favor. Yeah. So, you know, when Teddy and Keith was arguing and all that other stuff, it was just like, you know, Teddy didn't want to deal with Hiram, with Keith, period. So mm-hmm. he just didn't do it. And... Mm-hmm. um it, you know, it was what it was, but I um, I just felt like, you know, it was unfortunate that it had to go down that way, you know. But um, I still ended up singing with Teddy. I went out on the road with Guy. I was home from singing with Toto, and Teddy called me, and he was like, Jack, can you do me a favor, please? And I was like, what? And he said, I need you to come out on the road and sing goodbye love with Aaron oh. and I was like okay well how much am I making and he was <laughs> like call Gene <laughs> I called Gene Gene will work it out with you I said okay so I did end up singing with Guy for a little while as well um, not long because that's when that whole nonsense went down with with um, New Edition and Guy mm-hmm. oh okay good the super fair. Were, you, were you there when that whole happened I was singing with them, but I hurt my leg the weekend before, oh. and I couldn't 
walk, but no lie. To I mean, this is all my life. I was trying to put my shoe on and the stuff anyway. I was like, I'm going to go ahead and go fly out to meet them. And when I tell you that the Most High was speaking to my spirit loud, like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and said, don't go. And I'm like, what? And it just said, don't go. So I get called the cab. I'm going to the airport and everything. And it said, don't go again. And I'm saying, okay, I'm in the car going to the airport, to, in the cab. And I, when I tell you, the voice was like, I said, don't go. I said, okay, you don't have to say nothing else. I asked the cab driver to turn back around um, and take me home. And I told him I'll pay him, you know, for both ways. And when I got home, you know, I was trying to call Gene and tell him, I was like, I'm just telling him that my foot is too swollen. I can't put my shoe on. I'm just not going to come. And I couldn't get Gene. I couldn't get Teddy. Finally, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning after the show, I get Teddy on the phone. He was like, oh, you're never going to believe what happened. And I was like, what? And he was like, they pulled the plug on our show, you know, right in the middle of Goodbye Love. I mean, um, not Goodbye Love because um, Aaron didn't do it. Um, Peace of my love. So... I was like, what do you mean? He was like, oh, it's a big deal. And I'm like, uh oh, here we go. And then the next day is when all, it happened, the fight, the everything after the show. And um, Anthony got killed. Um, Teddy, Teddy and Aaron and Damien's bodyguard. Um, and it was crazy. It was crazy. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I know now, you know, I knew then that the Most High was protecting me not mm. to be there when that stuff happened, you know, because people got shot, you know, Anthony died and he was with us all the time. Like he was their bodyguard. So he was my bodyguard too. I didn't need a bodyguard, but he was mine too, mm. you know, so I traveled, you know, with Teddy, Aaron and Damien. So, you know, we were always flying together in the limo, whatever. Mm. And uh, I wasn't there. And, and, you know, I think, the most high every day that I was not there. I thank him every day that I wasn't there. That was horrible. But yeah. um I, I, yeah. did your album come out by this time. My album, I'm trying to think. Was my album out already when I did this? I think no, my album. No, it wouldn't have been because this would have been the um No, uh, so my was, album the the future out the two future tour, so probably on ninety one. So your album came out in ninety two. Right. It came out in ninety two. Right. So I mean I I um I loved it hurts it's 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 almost i mean it's a really beautiful a beautiful track i mean and it and it's it's it is like make it last forever part two it kind of thing <laughs> um it yeah it's, it's it's a really infectious song um and you know and you know and you know by this time i'd gotten used to keep singing because most of us kind of he was always known for the begging and stuff, but and right. which was a good trademark. But did you get right. used to to his voice by this time? Because it it really did make a difference. <laughs> right, right, right. He, I mean, Keith Keith has a style, and you know that was undeniable. Him having a style, very undeniable. Um, and people love Keith, so it's like you know he. The one thing about Keith, I can say, you know, Keith is a performer, and he's. Also, you know, he's a stylist because he has a style of singing, but he's a great producer as well. Great yeah. writer producer. You know, I can't take that away from him. He's a great writer producer. Um, and, you know, now he's, you know, just legendary. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it is what it is now. It's like, okay, everybody's getting old now. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think MC helped? Did, what do you, How do you think they did with your album? Because, as I said, you had... Um, is it Ske um, Skeezer? Skeezer I mean was my first single, and I didn't want to do Skeezer because Skeezer was just, just risque. Yeah. So <laughs> Skeezer was like my song. This was before Beyonce, you know. Yeah. So Skeezer, I had chicks in cages and yeah. dances and dances. You know, I had a lot of the dancers that danced with Michael. You know, they danced with us with Keith, and um, the choreographer was Big Les. From, oh, Big you know, Les, yeah, yeah. Yes, Big Les was my choreographer, and um, that's my sister. 
So, um, you know, we had this whole sexy video. And, you know, they didn't know what to do with me. They didn't, because I was too eclectic, too crazy. You know, I always had this crazy fashion. Um, I wore wigs. I wore, you know, braids. I wore whatever. I wore all kind of stuff. And and then I got even more crazier when I met um, Corey Glover from Living Color it, when I was out with Toto. And I was like, I'm shaving my hair uh. on the sides of my head. And that's before my record dropped. So on my on my cover, I had a wig on. And then, and like, if you see the other pictures from my album, I had my hair shaved with the braids on the top, like Corey <laughs> Glover from Living, Co from Living Color, um, who is a good friend of mine who I love dearly. Um, but yeah, MCA just didn't, they didn't know what to do with me. Um, Puffy asked to work with me and they said no. And uh, Andre Harrell, he did manage me for a minute and he did come to me with the whole idea of being the queen of the ghetto, the queen of hip hop soul. And I was like, I'm not ghetto. What are you talking about? Uh -huh. And he was like, yo, money, you can wear shrimp earrings. Yo, Jack, I'm telling you, you can pull this off. I was like, I can't pull that off. That's not me. That's not me. It's not for me. And um, we were actually talking about that. I had uh, one of the guys, um, Jimmy Jenkins, uh, Jay Love. Yeah, he was, Jay Love. Um, yeah, that's that's my boy. And, you know, he was Andre's right-hand man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, you know, right under him with Uptown. Yeah. And um, he, we were talking about that because I have a show that I do. We were talking about that on my live and we were laughing and I was like, I bet you Dre is rolling around right now. <laughs> still mad at me because I was like, he was mad at me. He stayed mad at me for years. He would not talk to me because I would not do what he asked me to do. I was like, yeah, I got married, J. Belage. You turned her into what you, what you asked me. That's beautiful. It worked. Still mad at me, wasn't talking. Wow. Yeah, I had a two-hour two, two hour interview with Jay Love, uh, uh, Jimmy Jenkins, and he, you know, he's really good at telling the stories. Even when It Hurts was blowing up, did MCA not have some direction to try and really capitalize on that? Because... Um... MCA just knew they wanted to put out a ballot with me yeah. and, and keep on it. That's all they knew. They didn't know what they were going to do. They didn't know how they were going to work me. I mean, we had a great team. I loved our MCA um, staff and team. They they were the best, but they had so many records to work. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. after my second single, we were about to drop the third single. It Hurts Me was the second single. And they told me, Jackie, we want you to go back in the studio. So I said, okay. I was upset, but I said, okay. Went back in the studio, started working with Jermaine Dupri. Wow. Um, with um, Mark Gordon from Levert. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bobby, um, Bobby Wooten, who was the same guy that worked on Keith. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who's on my second album. Um, I worked with Bobby Wooten on my first two. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a few few great producers actually producing now. Um, Reese Johnson, uh, producer, declared that I just did the new, my new single yeah. with. He, I've been working with him since '94, so he was he had worked on that album as well. So it was, it was the album was crazy. It was a dope album. You finished and recording it. Was, finished recording it everything was ready to go and they got a new team in and they dropped 15 artists and it was me jody Watley, eric b um it was a whole bunch of us that got dropped 15 of us and i was devastated i was devastated and i was like i'm not singing anymore i'm done i'm finished i'm not doing this I can't do this anymore. It's too much. And, you know, I was just like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. So I started, I started, um, I was pregnant with my first son. So I was like, you know what? Let me just have my baby and be a mom, you know? And after I had him, um, I went to school 
for cosmetology because I was not going to sing. I was like, I'm not singing. I don't want to sing. So I went to school for cosmetology. While I'm in school, I get a phone call because I'm still an MCA writer, right? So I get a phone call from my, my rep, Kim Jackson, and she says, okay, I have a situation for you. And I was like, what? And she's like, um, two things. Two, two groups need a singer. And they want to know if you're interested. And I said, who? She said, the brand new heavies and family stand. They did get to heaven, right? Yes. Okay. So I was like, oh, which one? <laughs> I was like, I like both. I don't know how to choose. So I said, if I have to choose one, I would say the family stand. Because I knew Sandra St. Victor. You know, Sandra was my girl. You know, I knew she had left the group to go do a solo thing. And, you know, I knew she got to be free and do what she wanted to do uh, in the group, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. as far as the rock music and stuff. And I wanted to do some rock. So I was like, you know what? I'll do the family stand. So, I, you know, I met Pete and Jeff. We get together. Um, Pete played the songs for me and had me sing. And he was like, hands down, this is you. So Sylvia Rome, she consented. Yes, Jackie's going to do it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so I ended up doing um, an album called Connected with the Family Stand. And that's one of my favorite records. I love that album. Yeah. I love, love, love that album. Yeah, and it's a mix of when it funk, came out, punk, you know, rock, and then, yeah. Yes, yes, but it was a, it. I think me me being on it made it a little bit more R and B ish, <laughs> and uh, and, but it was it was a great album, and we were all working together at the at that time. Um, Family Stand had they were producing Corey Glover's solo solo album that he did through the face, and um, it was another group. On, on that was signed to um, Pete and Jeff, um, the the uh, well the Good Fellas, and the Good Fellas had uh, Sugar Honey Iced Tea and um, If You Walk Away. So we all started doing shows together. We would do little shows, you know, around New York and wherever we ever, wherever we went, and um, you know we were doing that and. We started, we came to the UK. Um, they were ready to do this big European tour with Family Stand and um, everything was set up and then boom, that gets pulled. And it's like, oh, come on. This, I can't, I can't, I can't. And after that, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I did um, songs for, I did jingles for television and radio. And I, I was doing artist development then, too. I started doing artist development too, when I was still on MCA. Um, and I started working with all these other artists. And I just did that. That was, you know, and I was being, and then I was like, let me just be mommy. Because I was pregnant with my second son okay. when I, um, when they decided they weren't going to do the family stand. Uh, the tour and, and everything just fell apart. I was pregnant with my second son. I said, you know what? I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm just going to have my baby. They're like, no, I'm not doing this. So everyone's going to um, ask me what, what, what happened to that, your second album that you recorded? Where did you, do you have a copy of it? Well, cause we. No, I, I don't have it. Um, MCA still owns the rights to some of it. Um, I don't have any of it. Now, Mark Mark Gordon from Levert, you know, we're still really close friends. Um, that's one of my best buddies. Yes, yeah, He and Chucky with. Booker. And, yeah, Chucky Booker actually worked on my second album, and I sung on Chucky Booker's album as well on um, this song called um, Deep Sea Diver. That was on the game, the album that Games was on. Um, okay. I sung on the song for Chucky, but Chucky produced my Chucky was one of the producers too on the second album. Okay. It was Chucky Booker, Jermaine Dupree, Mark Gordon. 
um, and some other, and Reese, the guy that I'm working with now, and, and um, you know, a few people. But <laughs> no, I don't know who has any of the old stuff. Reese, he does have one, one song that I hated. And I was like, yuck, no, we're not going to, no, 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 no. Um, but have you listened to the album you know, since then? Have you heard any of the tracks since you recorded it? No. Wow. Are you not curious? I mean, most of us would be dying to. Uh, have you asked any of the producers, like, come on, let's let's try and, like, a jigsaw put the, together that album? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I was like, you know what? It, it obviously wasn't meant to happen, so I let it go. I was just like, no, I let it go. It was not. Mm-mm. Wow. What is yeah. what? I mean, we, I mean, you've named some really big producers. I mean, Mark Gordon did a lot of stuff with Troop, and so they were there were some big producers. And then you're talking about Jermaine in his early days, and then Chucky. So it must be some really rich music. Oh, Jermaine! Oh, we had a we had a. A, a joint that we did um, called Alone, it would have been so big if it came out. It would have been so big. Because it kind of had that beat of kick off your shoes and yeah, relax yeah, speed. Yeah, yeah, it had yeah. that just kicking it beat. But it was it was a it was more of a ballad, you know, yeah, thing. Yeah. And it was like um it was um let me see if I can remember it. Um Alone alone you left me here by myself you know good and damn well you know i shouldn't be alone alone it was so cute i love the song it would have been so big but record never came out never came out wow can they just do that to help spend all that money record an album and they say well it's not going on and we just lock it up and just throw away the key that was a hundred thousand. That was a hundred thousand dollars thrown away just on three songs with Jermaine, and that he did a deal. He was giving me a, a discount. <laughs> oh, so that was just his song. It's not the rest. So no. I mean, they, they, oh, my album cost a lot of money to do. My albums cost a lot of money to do. I was a million past a million, one point one million dollars in the hole with. MCA and my attorneys got all of that wiped off when they dropped me. Wow. They were like, nope. They said she's pregnant and y'all <laughs> dropping her. And then they got me money. They oh. got me money and the, the million point whatever oh, wipe e rate. Yep. Wow. The, it was it was a lot. You know, in the um, if this world were mine. Now I listened to it. And I thought this sounds like you recorded it in 1990, um, <laughs> and, and saying that just because of the vibe of it, it's a really beautiful song. I mean, who 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 worked on it with you? Reese. Oh, Reese maybe Johnson. that's why. Okay. And he, when when we, to be honest, that was one of our songs that we kind of revamped. To be ah, honest, because okay. I wanted a, a 90 song. Oh, it's a beautiful 90 song. I wanted a but yeah, Reese, um it you know, it's it's a song that was revamped and um we wanted a 90 sound to put yeah, out. Beautiful, yeah, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Thank you. We wanted to, you know, 90s thing to put out. And the only reason why we didn't get to work it, because I got I started having problems with my esophagus. And my voice was gone. I oh. couldn't even sing it if I wanted to sing it. Wow. Gone. I couldn't sing it, perform it nowhere. So I was like, what's the point in trying to, you know, work the record? I can't perform it. Wow. So I just I just left it alone. I just, you know, left it alone. But but you know, now okay, we had a different place now. Now yeah. we had a different place. Yeah, no, I I, I was surprised. in fact I discovered it during the lockdown and I was like, and you know, and I've and I've re- recently listened to it. Um, but that will take me to riches of the world. Um, it, it's 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 a really surprising, really surprising up tempo beat. Um, and you know, it's a really it's you know like almost like a, a mix between dancehall and, and stuff. But you can still get the message from it. Who who did the production on that? Um, producer Declare Reese Johnson. 
we we um I wrote it. It's so crazy because I started writing it in my he set up a little studio for me. I was living in Jersey and and he lives here in Atlanta. And I he set up he told me the computer to buy, the microphone, the everything to buy. <laughs> and I got all this equipment and stuff. You know, a little small little studio. He set up Pro Tools in it and he was able to, you know, control my stuff from where wow. he is. So I would lay down vocals and, you know, come up with beats or whatever. I'll send it to him. And I'm like, okay, do something with this. I need something hot. Come on, we gotta. So that's how Riches of the World was was written. Um, and it actually was finished in 2020. Oh. But I moved to Atlanta in 2020, right, right in the midst of the pandemic. Yeah. And um I we I went in the studio because it was some vocal stuff that I couldn't get right in my little trash studio. <laughs> and uh, I went in Reese's studio and we did it over. And it was ready for 20, you know, we did, that was the end of 2020. So it was ready for 2021. And I was trying to put it out, put it out, put it out. And he wouldn't let me. Most High would not let me put that record out. So I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to deal with it. I'm going to leave it alone because he has not let me put this record out. Mm -hmm. And then Reese and I were on the outs for a minute because he got mad at me, <laughs> you know, because I'm always, you know, telling the spiritual truth. And he was mad at me. You know, I know he still loves me all the time, but he was mad at me. He wasn't talking to me. So he get, I, I'm, you know, this is not even a month ago. I'm like, you know what? Let me call my son because my son this is crazy. My, I was pregnant with my son when I was with the family stand. That was the last video that I did. And then when I did um, If This World Were Mine, my son was a freshman in college. He had just finished his first year. And he, he directed and um, produced um, if this were a mine video. So my son did this when he was, what, 19 years old. Wow. And then, um, so I called my son because he graduated this year. He did five years. Um, he, he graduated this year because he graduated as producer of film and director. And he's actually um, going to be starting a new job with HBO um, next week. And I called him and I said, can we get this record out some type of way? I got to put this record out, you know? And he was like, okay, mom. Well, okay, well, you know, Dez said he's around and that's his friend, that's a cinematographer. So I said, okay, how much I got to pay Dez, you know? And that was the whole thing. We got to come up with the money. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just talking about the song because I said, it's time for it to come out. I just feel it. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, I get a phone call from Reese. He leaves me a message and he says, Hey man, because he's country. He said, hey man, um, we got to put this song out, man. I had a dream. Wow. And God was telling me in a dream that Riches of the World got to come out right now. <laughs> I knew, I knew that he had the dream. I knew that he put it on his spirit. And he was like, we got to put it out. We got to put it out. And I said, I was doing it without you. <laughs> <laughs> I was putting it out without you. I don't care. I didn't care. So everything came together. Um, I got the money up to to pay the cinematographer. My son didn't want me to pay him, of course, because I'm mommy. Yeah. Of and course. you know, we had, you know we just had to pay for all the rest of the stuff. But you know, we got the video done for a thousand dollars altogether. Wow. You know, and that's with the traveling and the you know food and everything. Huh. So. It, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, and I mean, done with, uh, I don't know if, you know, who knows about cameras for, for film. Um, we got it done with a red camera because his friend that's a cinematographer, his family owns a film company. Okay. So they had, you know, they had the, the stuff. So it was the bomb. We had a good time, even you, though it was last minute. Yeah, you and I did some elements of a uh, uh, skit. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? Okay, so we were supposed to have this this thing going, 
where we had a, a club scene, right? Okay. We couldn't get the club scene together because my girlfriend owns the lounge and she was like, oh, y'all, we got to shut down at five. By five, because I have people coming at five. And I'm like, oh, Lord, it's at the last minute. But, you know, it was fine. We tried to figure it out. But we got these random women that worked at this place next door. They came in and was like, sure. And when I tell you, when I looked at the video, my son put them in the video. And I was like, "Uh -uh. (laughs) uh-uh. No, no, no. And I said, can you take some video material from Skeezer. Mm. And he said, yeah, ma. I said, so, because I said, if you want to see ass, <laughs> it'll be, it'll be Skeezer, uh, you know? And I was like, and that was the old me. That okay. was my old life. Yeah, you yeah. know, I was ratchet, not ratchet, but I was a mess back then, doing the most, doing too much. And, you know, the most high, he brought me out of that life. Mm. I did, you know, make a promise to him that if he, you know, allows me to sing again, then I will do message songs. I mean, I did, I wrote Riches of the World with Reese two years ago, well, two and a half years ago, really. And, you know, we got other music that we had started. Um, and I just told, you know, our father in heaven, I said, Father, look, if you let me sing, I'm going to do your word. I'm going to put out message songs because there's a lot going on in this world right now. It's a mess. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to put out message songs. And, you know, when I was doing Riches of the World, I was homeless. I was living with a friend of mine. And um, I was homeless at the time. And I was like, you know, I went through a homeless situation for seven years until I moved to Atlanta. And the most I blessed me with my own beautiful place. And, um, I went through, you know, I went through a lot. I went through a lot, me and my daughter, because I, I left my husband and we went we went through a lot. But we came out on top anyway, you know, and um we are, you know, we are we 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 good. We are right. We are right. Yeah. You know, she she did get diagnosed with diabetes oh, during sure. our time when we were homeless yeah. and living, you know, with my friends. Um and don't get me wrong, we didn't live in no places that was disgusting or not mm-hmm. good or anything. My my friends have beautiful places, but it, when it's not your place, yeah, yeah and yeah. you know you gotta tippy toe, and you don't want nobody, you know, you stay to yourself, and you know whatever. You just it's it's a lot, you know, it's a lot. And at one point of my of me being homeless and not having anywhere to live, I stayed with in New York before I left New York. I went to Jersey. But I was living with Herbie Lovebug's mom. I was uh-huh. renting from her. I was renting a room from her. And um, I had like the whole upstairs, me and Herbie's niece. And and I shared the kitchen with his mom, with mommy mom. Wow. So, because we've been friends for a long time. His sister's my best friend. And, you know, his mom, that's, that's my other mother. That's my Haitian mother. And... Um, <laughs> It was a lot. It was a, it was a long journey, but Riches of the World, you know, when I started writing Riches of the World, it was because people don't understand that you can have all the riches and it means nothing. Mm-hmm. It means nothing. And you sell your soul to have what? To have nothing. Because one day all of that's going to be taken from you because, you know, when when you get something, being prosperous and then wanting to be rich is two different things. Being prosperous is your blessings that come from the most high, God, um, and not the God of this world, which is Satan, who I call the God of this world. He'll give you everything you want, all the riches, all the fame, all the everything, but it's a price. It's a price. And the singers that are getting up there now, and, and you know, I, I call them out, and I, you know, I know people are fans of theirs, but I have to call it out. You have the the Beyonce, the Cardi B's, the Megan Thee Stallion, and you know even um um what's her name, the heavy set girl, um, Lizzo. Uh, Lizzo, and I'm like, you have all of these singers and they butt ass naked, excuse my mouth, mm-hmm. butt naked, doing all kind of stuff, kissing 
kissing and, you know, doing all kind of stuff on stage, all kind of craziness. And then there's things right in front of our faces. And we're like, okay, do, 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 no, we don't, we, we good. We love them. You know, that's, but it's tearing our children apart. It's messing up our women. You know, we got women out here now dropping it, you know, twerking everywhere. Yeah. All women twerking, you know, it, it's bad. Cause it's like, what spirit is this? Mm. You know, and it's bad. So for me to put out Riches of the World, I'm like, and to do the video the way I did it, me playing like the devil yeah. Yeah. and then me wearing the dress and representing the bride that, which is righteousness that Jesus is going to come back for. Mm. Um, I knew I had to do that. I knew I had to do that. And, it's, and it was this time. I know that, it, that this song was supposed to come out at this time because the Most High allowed it. He wouldn't allow it before. And then he allowed it. So I said, okay, it's time. And it's not even for me to be like, oh, you know, um, let me fix this thing. I don't want to block the thing. No, it's for me to be, you know, a star. And I, I don't want no parts of the music industry like that. You know, I love doing radio, doing radio, you know, interviews and going to sing live and all of that. But all of that stuff with record labels and, you know, the the, the awards and the this and that. And I don't have nothing to do with none of that stuff. You know, because for, that's not, it's just not of, you know, it's not of the most high to me. Because I've been in the business for a long time and it's an evil business. I mean, so, for, 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 for us as consumers of music um, and big fans, but we, 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 we've not been on uh, in the industry like you have. And so you have a song that, that's you know as i said you, you you you're almost in third person as the devil saying yeah if, if you do this i'll give you all this stuff and I, and and actually the video does work out because i like the how they dance to the beat is really is a really catchy beat but then it's you know we we hear stories about so uh, freemasonry illuminati and all this stuff and but we only hear the stories um and we may see the new um, Beyonce album, Renaissance, and start seeing images, but not really thinking much of it, or Church Girl, and think, oh, it's just just her having fun. But then I guess for those of you who have been behind the scenes, is there things that we, is it, can we not take it as face value as just art? Or do you think being from the industry, thinking, no, some of these things aren't just coincidence, that they, 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 they know what they're doing in, in imagery. Oh, yeah. It's not art. <laughs> it's not art. They definitely know what they're doing. And and what, what makes me even matter is because the record labels are allowing it. Who owns the record labels and who owns the media? I, I leave it at that. And then I'm like, they supposed to be the chosen people? We know they're not. So it's the ones that run run the labels that say, yeah, this is good. Yeah, let's do this. Let's make this, you know, and and then and then why, first of all, you know, even for like Jay-Z and Beyonce being married, just that alone. Marriage is sacred, you know. I don't believe that the whole world should see her with a thong on and, and garters and men are lusting after his wife. That's not how it's supposed to be for what? For record sales? That's not how it's supposed to be. And, um, you know, the pasties on on sitting on the horse and you just so happen to be sitting on a pale horse. And and the pale horse is one of the horses in the seven seals and revelations. And not only are you sitting on a pale horse for your, for your album cover, you did a red horse, you were sitting on a red horse on the front cover of the um, British Vogue. And this is these are the things, like, because I, I study deep into, you know, um, the word. And it's a lot. It's a lot going on. It's a lot of stuff that people don't want to, you know, people don't want to know. They don't want to know what's coming. They don't want to be a part of it. They don't want to believe it. And it's okay. It's okay not to believe it because we can believe what we want. We have free will. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, oh my goodness, the enemy is not hiding himself. He's showing himself butt naked. He could care less. He's like, I'm taking souls and I don't care. 
And people don't understand how demonic this world is even becoming an evil. It's so much evil that people are going on along with evil and saying it's good. You know, and the word says that. Oh, what's evil will become good and what's good is going to become evil. So, yeah, people, you know, say I post stuff on my IG and I say stuff. I'm always getting kicked off of IG. <laughs> you know, they shut me down. They won't let me come on for a couple of days. Um, when I post stuff, you know, most people are on the same page with me because I do a live. But then there's people that are like, well, why are you just saying Beyonce and not other? I'm like, it's not just Beyonce, but Beyonce is the one on the pale horse right now. I was like, she's the one on the pale horse and on the, and have a bat from it outfit on. You know, you you got a bat. Why do you have a bat from it outfit on? And I'm not taking away from the rest of these that's in it, um, the J-Lo's and everybody else. Let me tell you something. In order to be big in our business, you have to sacrifice yourself. You have to. You're not getting all of that money without a sacrifice. You're not, period. You're not. And people are like, all oh, the Illuminati and this and this and that, and they think stuff ain't real. If you open your eyes, you will see the realness of it. Get into that life. And once you into that life, you see the darkness. I remember going to a, a party that Dre and, and Easy e and them had. This was right before Easy e died. They had a party in Malibu. And I was invited to the party. I get to the party. Everybody's butt naked, almost. Hmm. Okay. And I'm like, what? What is going on in here? You know. And I was like, no, this is. I'm not supposed to be here. But you see the evil, the drugs, the everything. You see the evil. Now you got to make the choice if you want to go along with it. And the other evil is sell yourself. So you saw how we can, we're going to let you get all the money you need, but we want you to be butt ass naked. We want you to show every part of your body, except probably the inside of your JJ. Um, you know, I said, I, I, you know, it bothers me because Beyonce's talented, you know, Lizzo's talented. Lizzo, why are you naked? You know what? I don't get it. You want, you want to be free? So being free is being naked? Being naked is not freedom. You know, that's you saying, I want the world to see that I want to live in my, you know, being overweight. Okay, if that's what you want to be, overweight, you could have had your clothes on and been fly with your clothes on, <laughs> you know. Um, I just think it's too much. It's too much for our kids. Mm -hmm. They're putting too much on these kids and everything is, you know, you, you don't know what sex you are now. You binary, you X, you this, you that. What? It's too much. So I said, I will be the one, Father, that you want to use me, I'll be the one to bring your message across. And I ain't scared. You know? And that's my thing. I ain't scared. You know, I know I know what I, I'm battling with. I know what comes at me all the time. All the time. You know, so um, riches of the world is there. And I'm like, okay, let's go. Because People need to hear the word, hear this word. You know, all the riches of the world. Gain that ish and lose yourself. Gain it, you're gonna lose yourself because you're going after, you're going after all these riches. People work 20 jobs, you know, to to make ends meet. Can't get a, get their heads above water. Because, you know, our government don't want you to have nothing. But when you want to be rich and, and you, you start selling your friends out, selling everybody else out, now you're going to do this class and that class, and then you you all of a sudden into these cults. And I call them cults because anything that tries to lure you in and it's like, you know, buy this. We're talking about um, get into this real estate and get into that. You're going to make money. You're going to make a lot of money. If you want to make millions, you can get into this. And these are cults. People get tricked into getting into all of these things. And... They get into these things and it's like, okay, I want to make all this money. And then everything is about when I make, start making money, you know, oh, it's, it's my closet. It's my red bottoms. It's my Louis Vuittons. It's my, you know, my car with my rims and what I have, you know, everything is what you have, my houses and, you know, all these shows that come on. Half those people don't even live in those houses, you know, and then you got people wanting to um, imitate how 
love and hip hop is and how the housewives of Atlanta and that, you know, housewives of Jersey and this and this and that. It's all a mess. It's all a mess. You know, we, we on TV, being clowns on TV, buffoonery, making a fool out of ourselves, arguing, cussing each other out, doing all kind of nasty, weird stuff. And I'm like, man, this is a hard time to live in, you know, for any child that's growing up. They don't know what the heck to believe, what to do. Should I be a stripper? Should I shoot? I can be like Beyonce. I can wear, you know, I can wear pasties on my breast and, you know, go to a party. I can have one, you know, I've never seen so many gowns now for like, you know, for when you're graduating from high school and then you, you have your prom and all that. I've never seen so many, you know, gowns of, the cuts all the way down your breast and the slit is up to your booty or, you know, tight, tight, tight. And just a mess. Just yeah. a mess. Well, I, but I'm I'm the one that's coming to fight. Yeah. No, you, you know, it's, and as I said, you know, anyone, and, and you know, we'll make sure people get to listen to uh, Riches of the World because it, it, you don't have mince words about, you know, I'm going to offer you all this stuff if you, if you give yourselves over to it. And as I said, as consumers, we, 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 you know, we just listen to music and, and we probably you know some of us would, would notice. I, I think I noticed a lot about when an artist came out in the nineties, they were well-dressed. And then by the time they get to the second album, they were wearing less clothes and it was, it became worse and worse. And, and, and the actual label stopped signing talented singers. Yes. You know, you had the Regina Bells and Nikki Howard, you had, yes. um, we, we had people who would sign for their, for their vocals and their talent. But then it started to be okay. You look good. You can dance. You know, we don't don't worry about singing. We can put some auto tunes on there. Um, and I know that um, one of the Clark sisters got sort of um, criticized for giving uh, you know permission for Beyonce to use the, uh, her song. Then Donnie McClurkin came on as well to say, look, you know, even though she's as a writer, but she doesn't control the publishing, so there's very little she could do. So she probably, as much as she might object, she wouldn't have any any power for that. But a lot of us might think, um, oh, church girl, she's just talking about don't be judged by the world um, because any uh, human beings would judge you. But then other people are looking at some of her songs and saying, look, there's something much deeper in these songs that you might not really notice. You're just singing along and dancing, but there's something quite deep inside. And a lot of us will think, well, do people intentionally go in to make music with them, with knowing that this could lure people to the dark side? Or do they just sing on uh, being naive, not knowing the effects that their songs and lyrics are, are having? You know what I believe? Because I'm a singer, songwriter. I believe that we all have a journey in our lives regardless of what and um when she talks about Sasha Fierce oh, yeah. Sasha Fierce is a spirit oh. she she does it like it's her alter ego yeah, yeah I remember that too. so if you have to be Sasha Fierce to be that then you're not being yourself so that's a spirit so you got to get into the spirit to do this stuff because that's not Beyonce doing it. This is Sasha Fierce doing it. She said when she's doing all that stuff on stage and all that stuff, she said, that's not me. That's Sasha Fierce. That's a spirit. That's a spirit she has on her. When she get in the studio, maybe there's some of the stuff that she's doing. Maybe she's Sasha Fierce when she's doing that. Because uh, and, and, and I'm going to say this too. And I love me some Twinkie Clark. I am a Twinkie Clark fan. But and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be hard on her. Twinkie knew who, who Beyonce was before she said, yes, you can use my record. It's about money. And Twinkie knew who Beyonce was. The same thing as none of these, none of these people, none of these gospel artists and, and church people are coming up saying anything about Beyonce being on these horses. These horses are in revelations. You have no T.D. Jakes. You don't have no, none of them. You don't have no, no Kirk Franklin, no, no, um, um, 
Clark sisters, anybody. You have nobody coming forth saying, why is Beyonce on the on the four horses um, from Revelations? From the seven seals in Revelations. She has been on every color horse that is said in, in the seven seals. So it's four horses and it's the pale horse, which is her album cover. The red was the front of um, British Vogue. And then it was, she was on a white horse and she was on a black horse. And then she has a picture with a Baphomet outfit on. Don't this throw up red flags? Like, do y'all get this? I'm like, does this make, does this look normal? But see, people don't want to see that. And I believe that there's strong delusion right now amongst our people, period. People everywhere. And um, people don't want to see. They don't want to see what truth is. And everybody don't believe in the most high, you know? People believe in something else. They Buddhism, you know, they do Buddha and they do whatever. Um, my thing is this. I can say for myself that I know how real the most high is because every single time, even down to the thing I was telling you about with being out with Teddy and, and with Guy and that happened and the spirit spoke to my spirit. Mm -hmm. The most high has been talking to my spirit since I was a kid. And I was a kid that was, you know, molested by my dad. Uh, my dad was a heroin addict, a whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, my mother was a nurse. She wasn't with my dad. Um, but just, you know, life was a little crazy. And the most high has been speaking to me since I was a kid. And I know that he was God in my way the whole time through my whole life up until now. And, you know, I don't have my age. Um, I always say I'm Janet Jackson's age. <laughs> Janet is actually a year. I mean, she's some months older than me because she's 56 already. I'm not 56 yet. I'll be 56 in October. And one thing I do know in my life and a lot since I turned my life over, 17 years ago, the most I spoke to my spirit loud and clear. I was walking one day and I was coming from church doing shenanigans anyway. Even, you know, my pastor was, was not a good pastor either. And I mean, he was a good pastor, but he wasn't doing the right things. And I had just gone to church and said something to him. You know, I went over there, dropped my little tithings off and whatever. And I said to him, you need to, you need to come out of the church for a minute. You need to step down out of the building because we are the church. So I said, you need to come out of the building for a minute because you can't lead the flock if you're not living right. And that was my thing to him. Because, you know, I, I grew up going to church and stuff. My grandmother was a Pentecostal minister, so my mother forced us to go to church, but then <laughs> I went to church with my with my grandparents too. Um, my, my mom's dad and his wife, which was the only real grandmother that I knew. But um, after I did that, a voice in me, loud, the same voice that I heard with Teddy and all of that. I, I've been... That voice, that same voice got me out of so many like shootouts and this and that, the stuff that was going to happen. Here come that voice again. And that voice said, change your life or you're going to lose your soul. I'm like, what? What? Am I talking to myself? I'm like, am I talking to myself? You know, you think you're talking to yourself. So a couple of days later, same thing. Change your life or you're going to lose your soul. I'm like, what is this? What is this? Got it a third time. I said, okay, you don't have to tell me no more, Father. I'm listening. From that point on, I started to change my life. I started studying the word. I started studying way like lost books, everything. And then he started revealing things to me after, you know, 12 years. Five years ago, he started revealing a lot of things to me. And um, a lot of stuff I didn't understand, a lot of a lot of things. So do I believe that the most high is real? Of course I do. Because he speaks to my spirit. Um, do I think it's the devil? No, because he ain't telling me to do nothing wrong. 
the, the enemy ain't going to tell you to come out of wrong. Mm -hmm. The enemy's that's the crazy thing. The enemy's not going to tell you to come out of the clubs, come out of drinking, come out of, um, you know, fornication, having sex, um, adultery, you know, abortions, anything. He's not going to tell you to come out of that. As long as you're in that, you're good, you know. But when you're called out of it, that's when you know. Somebody's somebody's watching me, you know, because you're called out of it. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, I started studying this stuff, so I really know. And, and now what I see, I see stuff so clear. And when I see these things with our artists, I'm like, oh, man, not you too. <laughs> like, no, this is bad. This is bad. Wow. And, you know, we want to say, well, you know, what 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 are they doing? Are they selling their souls? Like, are they signing checks? And I, I can tell you, it's a lot more rappers that I know that can tell the story, you know, better. Um, because the guys, they come from a different angle, you know. The guys in the business can be in a meeting or something, and they're like, we want you to come to a party, you know. And that party will be something bananas, like, you know, with some a whole bunch of just homosexual stuff going on. And you can be straight and all this stuff is going on. And you got, you got a lot of them have, you know, been at those parties, you know. And the sad part is, do you sell yourself? For, for riches? Do you sell yourself for, you know, just to have that life for a minute? Because you might not have that life for a long time. It might just be for a minute. Is it worth selling yourself? Because, you know, a lot of entertainers, I remember I was talking about Nirvana the other day. And Kurt Cobain, he didn't want to be big like that. He just wanted to do his music. And then he ended up killing himself. And I believe that something was open, you know, something, something was open. And, you know, a lot of people think that people that are mentally ill and all of that are, you know, just, oh, it's their chemically, they're chemically imbalanced and this and that. My sister, they were called um, paranoid schizophrenic. Nothing was wrong with my sister. Growing up, nothing. Nothing. She turned 25. She went to Curacao. She had married this guy. She went to Curacao. When she went to Curacao, she said, when she came back, she wasn't even right. Something was wrong. She said they were killing, cutting chicken heads off and working rituals. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was telling me what they were doing, his family, her husband's family. My sister wasn't right since then. She started, you know, falling apart. Like first she started having these blackouts and stuff and then she started falling apart. Like spirits were talking to her, um, telling her to do all these crazy things. All these demonic spirits were telling her to do all these crazy things. Like not hurt people, but she would be butt naked. Like and and take all the furniture out the house and put it outside or throw it out the window or try to get what she could out the window. Or or she would take like um, be, like I said, be butt naked in the hallway in New York City. So it's like these voices start speaking to you. I know, because me and my sister were always close, mm -hmm. and I know to this day that they worked something on my sister. Because mm -hmm. nothing was wrong with her. She didn't have no chemical imbalance. And none of that. And you know, a lot of the, the, the people that I talk to that are supposedly crazy, um, when I talk to them and they talking to themselves, I do it all the time in New York. Um, when I go, or, you know, I didn't do it this last time because we mm -hmm. were doing the, the riches of the world, but um, I talk to, you know, these people that be talking to themselves or they cursing out somebody else, cursing them out. And when they get to me or they look at me, they'll just stop. And I'll say to them, why are you doing that? You can control that. 
and and one guy, um, two two guys I talked to, but this one guy, he was calling women bees and cussing them out, all kind of stuff on the bus in New York, cussing them out and real crazy. Everybody was like moving away from him, everything. And I said, okay, now if he says it to me, I'm gonna get him. So he looks at me and and he stops. And I said, why are you doing this? Because you can control that. I said, you know what that is, don't you? And he said, yeah, but I don't know how to control it. And I said, call on the name of Jesus, Yahusha. Because he, he doesn't know Yahusha. Mm. It's the Hebrew. So I said, Jesus. I said, call on the name of Jesus. Said, Father, in the name of your son, help me. I said, he's going to come. He's going to help you. But you got to fight it. You got to fight your way back out. Your mind is they taking over your mind. Mm. He listened to me, everything. And he was like, Okay, sis. Okay. Soon as soon as I got off the bus, I could hear him. He went right back to it. <laughs> Cussing, you be, you this, you that, and everybody's scared because it's a spirit. Mm -hmm. And I did it to another guy. Same thing. He and and he said he told me the same thing. He said I don't know how to stop it. Mm -hmm. And I said you have to call on the name. If you don't, because I said they scared of the name, <laughs> telling you they scared of the name. So, so uh, I mean, what what are you going to release more songs like Riches of the yes. World? Okay. Yes. And 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 what do you expect from Riches of the World? Are you expecting? I mean, I you know the industry is changing. Up, no one is buying CDs and the streaming is is you know it it it's, it can be part lock in times. But for you, is it a case of well, I've been instructed get the music out. I've got a video. And let it simmer, and you know whatever it does, it does, and then you're just gonna keep making more with, with Reese. Or what's what? What are we gonna? Spend? I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be with Reese because Reese said I'm not doing music anymore, Jack. I don't want to produce music anymore because he's another one. Been in the industry, produced so many people. Um, is working with Alicia Keys. He worked with Aaron Hall. He worked with you know um, Ronnie Bell. Um, he worked with. Um, me, he worked with, um, oh my gosh, he worked with so many artists and he got burned out. He was making so much money. He used to be a street dude. And when I met him, he had just come out, from, you know, getting shot up, shot wow. up, all of that, changed his life. And he wanted to do music and he's a brilliant producer, brilliant producer. And, um, he was making so much money you know, after doing all these artists he was working with. And he was just like, he gave it up. You know, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, he was like, I don't want to do music no more. Because he said, Jack, this this is too dark. It's too dark. He said, I'm, I'm seeing too much darkness. Hmm. He was doing all kinds of stuff anyway, because, you know, <laughs> he was from the streets. But it was a lot of darkness with the music. The business is, is, is dark. People be like, oh, you don't know. The, the, the business is dark. It's dark. It's darker now than it's ever been. Oh. Um, back in the day, I think it started, it got worse in the 90s. Like you said, you see people with clothes on and then the next thing you know, their clothes are coming off. Yeah. To me, it all started in the 90s. That's when it got the worst. Yeah, That's when yeah. it started. Yeah. Our, you know, our groups pumping the stage and, yeah. you know, everything was bumping and grinding and, you know, all of that. Um, that's when I think it really started the most, you yeah. know, that's when it started going in this direction to mm -hmm. get to where it is now. I'm, I'm even held accountable because Skiza was not a good, you know, that wasn't a good video. <laughs> that was, you know, chicks naked almost in cages. It was a sex club. You know, so I'm I'm held accountable for that. And that's why I said, Father, if you give me a chance to do this right, I'll yeah. do it. I'll do whatever <laughs> you say. You know, so it's my it's my journey right now to bring and, music and, we, and we should expect more more in, in due time. So at least you want this one to come out, do its thing, and then we'll see what what happens next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I, I'm trying to get Reese to do um we have a song called Crazy that we were writing and um, 
this song is, is crazy because my, my husband and I'm still married to, we separated. Um, he has a lot of um, bipolar behaviors okay. and I call him spirit. So I call the spirit crazy. Okay. And crazy is, you know, about we fall in love with these guys and, you know, women, we fall in love with these guys or a man fall in love with a chick and and they're crazy. I know where all kind of stuff start popping off. And you're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Who are you? Mm. And or the person say, who are you? You know, and the song is, you know, it, it's a dope song. Y'all would love it. <laughs> okay. I mean, y'all would love it. It's a ballad. But it's it's a hot ballad. But I want to bring across messages, mm -hmm. you know, like pay attention to crazy, because crazy is not crazy is just one of them personalities. That's one of them demonic spirits. There's a whole bunch of them mm -hmm. out there, and we have to learn as as spiritual beings, because we're spiritual beings. We in fleshly bodies, mm -hmm. and we have to learn to see things and see the light in things and see. When you see crazy on somebody and they start cussing you out on the second date or, you know, they slapped you by mistake. <laughs> it wasn't by mistake. They slapped you because they wanted to slap you, you know, and, and it is what it, God went through that with my husband. My husband is a lot younger than me. And I went through that with my husband and, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm, I'm an abusive person. Like I'm going to fight you. Period. You ain't put your hands on me. That ain't going to happen. So, you know, I ended up leaving him. But every time, you know, he would act up, I would see darkness in his eyes. No lie. Just black. Like no pupils anymore, no nothing, just black. Hmm. And I was like, wow, that's a spirit. And I, start, I had to start really looking at things in the spiritual and not in the flesh. So yeah, I'm coming with some more, okay. some more song. <laughs> we, Wake us up. Yeah, no, we get mm -hmm. ready. We get. We we look forward to that. I always end my interviews by asking my guests that if you were in an elevator and you had to watch a movie before, you know, because it's going to take two or three hours, what movie would you? Your favorite movie that you'd like to watch just to kill time? Oh gosh, what's my favorite movie? I don't. I, don't, I, I like biblical movies. You know. Um, but my favorite movie, um, I don't have a favorite movie, The Wiz. Okay, okay. <laughs> the black okay. version of The Wiz, Wizard the of Wiz. Oz, The yeah, Wiz. It was, it was The Wiz, Michael and, and Diana Ross, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> okay. my joint. I okay. can watch that a hundred times. Okay. <laughs> and then what's your, what's your all-time sort of favorite song? Not yours, but you just, you know, your favorite song. Um, Mother's Finest Love Changes. Oh, I don't think I've known that. Who, 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 and that's, that's a song that Melissa Morgan and Kashif did over. Oh. But the original group was... Um, Mother's Finest, and the singer, the lead singer, her name is Joyce Kennedy. Okay, okay, I will, I'll, I'll have to look, look that up. Oh, you're well, gonna love that song. <laughs> you're gonna love it. Okay, I'm telling I'm gonna, you now. I'm gonna look that up. So we're gonna make sure everyone gets to to watch um, your, your your video, your single, and and stream. Most people of my generation, they tend to stream on, on YouTube as opposed to you know Spotify and stuff. It's you know we don't have CD I don't have a CD player um stuff. So normally if I want to hear something new I'll go onto YouTube. So uh we'll stop pointing the link to, to everyone in there. Do we expect you to go on any promotional singing tour? Would you be singing live or or is it is that gone? I don't know yet. Um I would love to if if the most high allows it you know i would love to but i can't i know i can't do riches of the world in skiza <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> i could do i would do make it last forever because make it last forever is a love song and um 
I would do It Hurts Me. Yeah, um, that's some. I wouldn't do Skeezer. I wouldn't do Skeezer. What about If Tomorrow, and, if, if You Were Mine? That's a, that's a beautiful one. What, what, um, which if one? You if, mine. This, I, if, if This were, were Mine, I would do that too. Mine, yeah. well. Yes, I would do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. for sure. And then you, you but, mean, then Baby, is it uh, Alone? What was the name of the track you did with, you were singing? Alone, oh my gosh, I wish, I wish that song would have came out. Oh my gosh! I if, love that song. If you, if you, if you ask Steve, well, you're in Atlanta. To, if he could, if he, if he remembers it, if he can give you the demo of it, and you just recreate it and re recreate it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I've been here almost two years, and I have not spoken to Jermaine one time since I've been here. <laughs> and and I'm like, because I don't talk to anybody. I don't talk to Keith. I don't talk to anybody. I've just, I stay pretty much to myself, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of do what, what the most high wants me to do. And that's, yeah. you know, that's my mission now. And it's not to bash, like I said, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to bash any other singers because like I said, I think Beyonce is very talented. I think that, you know, Lizzo is very talented and, you know, Cardi B is just Cardi B. <laughs> you know, and, and Megan Thee Stallion is Megan Thee Stallion. But not to take away from anybody. I mean, Madonna was doing crazy stuff in her day. Crazy. Yeah. And yes, it was demonic. A lot of stuff, a lot of sacrilegious stuff. Madonna be doing all kinds of stuff. Kissing chicks on the lip, in the mouth. Recently, when what was that? A couple of award shows ago, whatever. Madonna always been off the chain. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that was Madonna. That was doors open, being open and being open then too. But I just feel bad for some of our artists that are out and they're influencing young girls mm -hmm. to be these things, to be thoughts, to be this, to be that. Like with Beyonce's song Church Girl, I hate the lyrics. I hate the song. I think the song is ugly. But the lyrics are horrible. And it's like, why are you telling church girls that pop it, pop it, drop it, pop it? Why would you tell them that? You know, if they try to be in church doing the right thing, oh, because you was a church girl and you did it. I was a church girl, you know. Um, I was a church girl. I wasn't popping nothing. It wasn't all that dropping and popping nothing. And, and it's nothing wrong with being a church girl. You know, and I kind of feel like you know, it's mocking church girls, the ones that want to do right. You know, tell them, I'll drop it. You know, can't nobody tell me what to do. I tell me what to do. Okay. But what I will say is pay attention to, y'all go watch her hold up video. She's levitating in the water. And the stuff that she's speaking does not sound like it comes from this lifetime. And then the Bible is floating in the water. And she says, I plug my menstruals with the holy pages. So I was like, do the math, y'all. Sasha Fence was talking on that. <laughs> you know? So, because, you know, you don't, that's one thing you don't do. You don't blaspheme the word. So I just think that. You know, the ones that are letting letting them do it because they want that, that sells records. That sells records. That turns, you know, that 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 breaks our people. You know, it's our women that's walking around twerking, looking crazy. It's our women that, you know, look ratchet and, and doing, that's our women. You know, shorts today, you know, JJ and all their boobies out and getting all these BBLs. That's our women that's doing this. So it's 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 making our women feel like they're not good enough and they don't have enough body. Their body's not good enough. They don't look good enough. And then you, you know, I don't know. I, I just, for me, I just think it's, it's bad. Yeah. It's just, it's bad all the way. And like I said, I'm not taking away from their talent, but I do, I will say, um, it's some souls being sold. <laughs> that, that I will say. Yeah. And for, for money. Because you're not going to get a billion dollars in the elevator for nothing. No. <laughs>
Well, Jackie, you have been, um, we've kept you for a long time, close to two yeah. hours, <laughs> and you, I know your hands must be hurting, but I appreciate it, and, um, you know, I, I definitely, um, I, I, as I said, I like the riches of the world, I like the track, I like the beat, but I do, I, you know, I told you, I said, if this world were mine, I love, love that. Yeah, it's love. a ballad. <laughs> it, it's a ballad, but I, even, it hurts, I mean, just such a beautiful song, so even though Keith Sweat's Make It Last Forever is the more popular one i think it, it, right. it hurts is probably on par with that it probably just didn't get the right kind of promotion from mca if you were if you were an uptown maybe they would have pushed it much they yeah. would have had a better way of handling it but um yeah and, and i just wish uh, but i know you're on a different journey and you've got a lot more music to, to come through and 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 stuff so you know i'll definitely be looking out for for uh, for that and um but yeah it, it's been really fascinating <laughs> I will. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I will do. I'll throw a love song in there somewhere because yeah. it's still love. We still got love in us, and that—that's what we are. We come from love, so I will do, you know, a love song. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.